I used to live and die by numbers. And I'm thinking that if you're in the majority, you might be too. And by numbers, I mean things like the scale, your gene size, your body fat percentage, um, calories, points, minutes of cardio, minutes to your next meal. You know what I mean? Those things that we just obsess over. So much of what I used to focus on when I was trying to lose weight or when I wanted to stop binge eating came down to these numbers. If I hit my number goal, I'd think I'm good today. And if I didn't, it was, oh, I suck. What's wrong with me? Why can't I do this? But here's what I know now that I didn't realize then, and it sounds kind of silly to say this out loud, but there's so much more to life than those numbers. Things like enjoying food instead of obsessing about food and every calorie and every bite. Things like feeling less stress about my body and as a result, having more energy to put into building a business. Things like not covering up my body in bulky sweaters and sweatshirts and wearing clothes that I loved and felt good in, like what I refer to as my uniform, which is a bodysuit and skinny jeans. But I completely see why we get so caught up with the numbers. They're tangible. They give us a very clear and very specific target to aim for. And then on the flip side of that, doing the intangible work of healing your relationship with food and respecting your body and finding enjoyment in your everyday life is a lot less measurable, which means it's a lot less exciting of a journey, right? But here's the truth. The number obsession is the very thing that keeps us stuck in the body and food obsession cycle. Because when we live and die by a number and we don't hit it, we feel like crap. Then we enter the self-sabotage by eating all the foods and then we still feel like crap or we try to diet harder, eat less, work out more and wind up feeling like crap. So what do we do when we find ourselves number obsessed and we're walking around feeling terrible and we're tired of it? Here's what you need to do. You need to commit to changing your approach. And I know change isn't easy. Trust me, I've been in your shoes. You've been counting points and calories for as long as you can remember. But the key to changing your relationship with food and your body can't be found in a meal plan or a diet program. If that worked, it would have worked by now, right? Even if your goal is weight loss, if that stuff worked, it would have worked by now. When you commit to changing your mindset about food and your body, everything changes. You stress less, you enjoy life more, you like yourself more, and you leave a whole lot more room open in your life for more joy and more fun. And if you're ready, I have a great opportunity coming up for us to work together one-on-one -on -one in February in my brand new coaching program, Nutrition Revival. I've started a waitlist for this program and you can get on that list by clicking the link in the description of this video. And when you join that waitlist, you'll get a chance to apply for this result focused program an entire week before anybody else. And you'll also get access to a lot of bonus materials that I'm only sharing with the ladies on this wait list. And another reason to jump on the wait list is because I'm only opening five spots for this round. This is the first time I'm running a one-on-one -on -one program this way. So if you feel like you're ready to stress less about food, enjoy life more, and fit into those jeans that are hiding in the back of your closet, click that link in the description and let's get you ready to rock.